Hello. We are starting with a science audiobook for class 10. The book name is Science NCRT. Let's start with Chapter 1 Chemical Reactions and Equations. Consider the following situations of daily life and think what happens when Milk is left at room temperature during summers. An iron tower slash pan slash nail is left exposed to humid atmosphere. Grapes get fermented. Food is cooked. Food gets digested in our body. We respire. In all the above situations, the nature and the identity of the initial substance have somewhat changed. We have already learned about physical and chemical changes of matter in our previous classes. Whenever a chemical change occurs, we can say that a chemical reaction has taken place. You may perhaps be wondering as to what is actually meant by a chemical reaction. How do we come to know that a chemical reaction has taken place? Let us perform some activities to find the answer to these questions. Activity 1.1 Caution. This activity needs the teacher's assistance. It would be better if students wear suitable eyeglasses. Clean a magnesium ribbon about 3 to 4 centimeters long by rubbing it with sandpaper. Hold it with a pair of tongs. Burn it using a spirit lamp or burner and collect the ash so formed in a watch glass as shown in figure 1.1. Burn the magnesium ribbon keeping it away as far as possible from your eyes. What do you observe? You must have observed that magnesium ribbon burns with a dazzling white flame and changes into a white powder. This powder is magnesium oxide. It is formed due to the reaction between magnesium and oxygen present in the air. Activity 1.2 Take lead nitrate solution in a test tube. Add potassium iodide solution to this. What do you observe? Activity 1.3 Take a few zinc granules in a conical flask or a test tube. Add dilute hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid to this at figure 1.2. Caution, handle the acid with care. Do you observe anything happening around the zinc granules? Touch the conical flask or test tube. Is there any change in its temperature? From the above three activities, we can say that any of. The following observations helps us to determine whether a chemical reaction has taken place. Change in state. Change in color. Evolution of a gas. Change in temperature. As we observe the changes around us, we can see that there is a large variety of chemical reactions taking place around us. We will study about the various types of chemical reactions and their symbolic representation in this chapter. Chemical Equations Activity 1.1 can be described as, when a magnesium ribbon is burnt in oxygen, it gets converted to magnesium oxide. This description of a chemical reaction in a sentence form is quite long. It can be written in a shorter form. The simplest way to do this is to write it in the form of a word equation. The word equation for the above reaction would be Magnesium plus oxygen magnesium oxide 1.1 In this reaction, magnesium and oxygen are the reactants and magnesium oxide is the product. The substances that undergo chemical change in the reaction 1.1 magnesium and oxygen, are the reactants. The new substance is magnesium oxide, formed during the reaction, as a product. A word equation shows change of reactants to products through an arrow placed between them. The reactants are written on the left-hand side, LHS, with a plus sign between them. Similarly, products are written on the right-hand side, RHS, with a plus sign between them. The arrowhead points towards the products and shows the direction of the reaction. Writing a chemical equation. Is there any other shorter way for representing chemical equations? 
Chemical equations can be made more concise and useful if we use chemical formulae instead of words. A chemical equation represents a chemical reaction. If you recall formulae of magnesium, oxygen and magnesium oxide, the above word equation can be written as Mg plus O2 will give MgO equation 1.2. Count and compare the number of atoms of each element on the LHS and RHS of the arrow. Is the number of atoms of each element the same on both the sides? If yes, then the equation is balanced. If not, then the equation is unbalanced because the mass is not the same on both sides of the equation. Such a chemical equation is a skeletal chemical equation for a reaction. Equation 1.2 is a skeletal chemical equation for the burning of magnesium in air. Balanced chemical equations. Recall the law of conservation of mass that you studied in class 9. Mass can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. That is, the total mass of the elements present in the products of a chemical reaction has to be equal to the total mass of the elements present in the reactants. In other words, the number of atoms of each element remains the same, before and after a chemical reaction. Hence, we need to balance a skeletal chemical equation. Is the chemical equation 1.2 balanced? Let us learn about balancing a chemical equation step by step. The word equation for activity 1.3 may be represented as Zinc plus sulfuric acid zinc sulfate plus hydrogen. The above word equation may be represented by the following chemical equation. Zn plus H2SO4 will give ZnSO4 plus H2 equation 1.3. Let us examine the number of atoms of different elements on both sides of the arrow. Here, the number of atoms of Zn H, S, and O on LHS and RHS are equal. LHS means left-hand side and RHS means right-hand side. As the number of atoms of each element is the same on both sides of the arrow, equation 1.3 is a balanced chemical equation. Let us try to balance the following chemical equation. Fe plus H2O will give Fe2O3 plus H2 equation 1.4. Step I. To balance a chemical equation, first draw boxes around each formula. Do not change anything inside the boxes while balancing the equation. Fe plus H2O will give Fe3O4 plus H2. Step 2. List the number of atoms of different elements present in the unbalanced equation, 1.5. Element Fe has one atom on LHS and three on RHS. Element H has two atoms on LHS and two on RHS. Element O has one atom on LHS and four on RHS. Step 3. It is often convenient to start balancing with the compound that contains the maximum number of atoms. It may be a reactant or a product. In that compound, select the element which has the maximum number of atoms. Using these criteria, we select Fe3O4 and the element. Oxygen in it. There are four oxygen atoms on the RHS and only one on the LHS. To balance the oxygen atoms, we will multiply Fe2O3 by 4 and H2O by 4. To equalize the number of atoms, it must be remembered that we cannot alter the formulae of the compounds or elements involved in the reactions. For example, to balance oxygen atoms we can put coefficient. For as for H2O and not H2O4 or H2O whole 4. Now the partly balanced equation becomes Fe plus 4H2O will give Fe3O4 plus H2 equation 1.6 which is partly balanced. Step 4. Fe and H atoms are still not balanced. Pick any of these elements to proceed further. Let us balance hydrogen atoms in the partly balanced equation. 
To equalize the number of H atoms, make the number of molecules of hydrogen as 4 on the RHS. Multiply H2O with 8 and H2 with 2. The equation would be Fe plus 4H2O will give Fe3O4 and 4H2. Step V. Examine the above equation and pick up the third element which is not balanced. You find that only one element is left to be balanced, that is, iron. Multiple Fe with 3 in reactants and Fe3O4 with 3 in the products. To equalize Fe, we take 3 atoms of Fe on the LHS. 3 Fe plus 4H2O will yield Fe3O4 and 4H2. Step 6. Finally, to check the correctness of the balanced equation, we count atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. 3 Fe plus 4H2O will give Fe3O4 plus 4H2. The numbers of atoms of elements on both sides of equation 1.9 are equal. This equation is now balanced. This method of balancing chemical equations is called hit and trial method as we make trials to balance the equation by using the smallest whole number coefficient. Step 7. Writing symbols of physical states carefully examine the above balanced equation 1.9. Does this equation tell us anything about the physical state of each reactant and product? No information has been given in this equation about their physical states. To make a chemical equation more informative, the physical states of the reactants and products are mentioned along with their chemical formulae. The gaseous, liquid, aqueous, and solid states of reactants and products are represented by the notations G, L, A, Q, and S, respectively. The word aqueous, A, Q, is written if the reactant or product is present as a solution in water. The balanced equation 1.9 becomes 3 Fe solid plus 4 H2O gas will give Fe 3 O4 solid plus 4 H2 gas. Note that the symbol G is used with H2O to indicate that in this reaction water is used in the form of steam. Usually physical states are not included in a chemical equation unless it is necessary to specify them. Sometimes the reaction conditions, such as temperature, pressure, catalyst, etc., for the reaction are indicated above and or below the arrow in the equation. For example, CO gas plus 2H2 gas will yield a 340 atmosphere CH3OH liquid equation 1.11. 6 CO2 aqueous plus 12 H2O liquid in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll will give C6H12O6 aqueous glucose plus 6 O2 aqueous plus 6 H2O liquid equation 1.12. Using these steps, can you balance equation 1.2 given in the text earlier? Types of chemical reactions. We have learned in class 9 that during a chemical reaction atoms of one element do not change into those of another element. Nor do atoms disappear from the mixture or appear from elsewhere. Actually, chemical reactions involve the breaking and making of bonds between atoms to produce new substances. You will study about types of bonds formed between atoms in chapters 3 and 4. Activity 1.4 Take a small amount of calcium oxide or quick lime in a beaker. Slowly add water to this. Touch the beaker as shown in figure 1.3. Do you feel any change in temperature? Calcium oxide reacts vigorously with water to produce slaked lime, calcium hydroxide, releasing a large amount of heat. Chow solid plus H2O liquid will give CaOH whole twice aqueous plus heat. Chow is quick lime and CaOH whole twice is slaked lime. This was equation 1.13. In this reaction, calcium oxide and water combine to form a single product, calcium hydroxide. 
Such a reaction in which a single product is formed from two or more reactants is known as a combination reaction. Do you know? A solution of slaked lime produced by the reaction 1.13 is used for whitewashing walls. Calcium hydroxide reacts slowly with the carbon dioxide in air to form a thin layer of calcium carbonate on the walls. Calcium carbonate is formed after two to three days of whitewashing and gives a shiny finish to the walls. It is interesting to note that the chemical formula for marble is also CaCO3. CaOH whole twice aqueous plus CO2 gas will give CaCO3 solid plus H2O liquid. CaOH whole twice is calcium hydroxide. Let us discuss some more examples of combination reactions. I. Burning of coal. C solid plus O2 gas will give CO2 gas. 2. Formation of water from H2 gas and O2 gas. 2 H2 liquid plus O2 gas will give 2 H2O liquid. In simple language we can say that when two or more substances, elements or compounds, combine to form a single product, the reactions are called combination reactions. In activity 1.4, we also observed that a large amount of heat is evolved. This makes the reaction mixture warm. Reactions in which heat is released along with the formation of products are called exothermic chemical reactions. Other examples of exothermic reactions are I. Burning of natural gas CH4 gas plus 2O2 aqueous will give 6CO2 aqueous plus 6H2O liquid plus energy 3. The decomposition of vegetable matter into compost is also an example of an exothermic reaction Identify the type of the reaction taking place in activity 1.1, where heat is given out along with the formation of a single product. Activity 1.5 Take about 2 G ferrous sulfate crystals in a dry boiling tube. Note the color of the ferrous sulfate crystals. Heat the boiling tube over the flame of a burner or spirit lamp as shown in figure 1.4. Observe the color of the crystals after heating. Have you noticed that the green color of the ferrous sulfate crystals has changed? You can also smell the characteristic odor of burning sulfur. 2 FeSO4 solid when heated will give Fe2O3 solid plus SO2 gas plus SO3 gas equation 1.19. FeSO4 is ferrous sulfate and Fe2O3 is ferric oxide. In this reaction you can observe that a single reactant breaks down to give simpler products. This is a decomposition reaction. Ferrous Sulfate crystals, FeSO4, 7H2O, lose water when heated and the color of the crystals changes. It then decomposes to ferric oxide. Fe2O3, sulfur dioxide, SO2, and sulfur trioxide, SO3. Ferric oxide is a solid, while SO2 and SO3 are gases. Decomposition of calcium carbonate to calcium oxide and carbon. Dioxide on heating is an important decomposition reaction used in various industries. Calcium oxide is called lime or quick lime. It has many uses, one is in the manufacture of cement. When a decomposition reaction is carried out by heating, it is called thermal decomposition. CaCO3 solid when heated will give Chow solid and CO2 gas equation 1.20. Here CaCO3 is limestone and Chow is quick lime. Another example of a thermal decomposition reaction is given in Activity 1.6. Activity 1.6 Take about 2 G lead nitrate powder in a boiling tube. Hold the boiling tube with a pair of tongs and heat it over a flame, as shown in Figure 1.5. What do you observe? Note down the change, if any. 
you will observe the emission of brown fumes. These fumes are of nitrogen dioxide, NO2. The reaction that takes place is 2 PbNO3 whole twice solid when heated will give 2 PbO solid plus 4 NO2 gas plus O2 gas equation 1.21. PBNO3 whole twice is lead nitrate PBO is lead oxide. NO2 is nitrogen dioxide and O2 is oxygen. Let us perform some more decomposition reactions as given in activities 1.7 and 1.8. Take a plastic mug. Drill two holes at its base and fit rubber stoppers in these holes. Insert carbon electrodes in these rubber stoppers as shown in figure 1.6. Connect these electrodes to a 6-volt battery. Fill the mug with water such that the electrodes are immersed. Add a few drops of dilute sulfuric acid to the water. Take two test tubes filled with water and invert them over the two carbon electrodes. Switch on the current and leave the apparatus undisturbed for some time you will observe the formation of bubbles at both the electrodes. These bubbles displace water in the test tubes. Is the volume of the gas collected the same in both the test tubes? Once the test tubes are filled with the respective gases, remove them carefully. Test these gases one by one by bringing a burning candle close to the mouth of the test tubes. Caution, this step must be performed carefully by the teacher. What happens in each case? Which gas is present in each test tube? Activity 1.8 Take about 2G silver chloride in a china dish. What is its color? Place this china dish in sunlight for some time, figure 1.7. Observe the color of the silver chloride after some time. You will see that white silver chloride turns gray in sunlight. This is due to the decomposition of silver chloride into silver and chlorine by light. 2 AgCl solid in the presence of sunlight will form 2 Ag solid plus Cl2 gas equation 1.22. Silver bromide also behaves in the same way. 2 AgBr solid in the presence of sunlight will give 2 Ag solid plus Br2 gas. The above reactions are used in black and white photography. What form of energy is causing these decomposition reactions? We have seen that the decomposition reactions require energy either in the form of heat, light or electricity for breaking down the reactants. Reactions in which energy is absorbed are known as endothermic reactions. Carry out the following activity. Take about 2 g barium hydroxide in a test tube. Add 1 g of ammonium chloride and mix with the help of a glass rod. Touch the bottom of the test tube with your palm. What do you feel? Is this an exothermic or endothermic reaction? Displacement reaction. Activity 1.9 Take three iron nails and clean them by rubbing with sandpaper. Take two test tubes marked as A and B. In each test tube, take about 10 milliliters copper sulfate solution. Tie two iron nails with a thread and immerse them carefully in the copper sulfate solution in test tube B for about 20 minutes, figure 1.8A. Keep one iron nail aside for comparison. After 20 minutes, take out the iron nails from the copper sulfate solution. Compare the intensity of the blue color of copper sulfate solutions in test tubes. A and B, figure 1.8 B. Also, compare the color of the iron nails dipped in the copper sulfate solution with the one kept aside, figure 1.8 B. Why does the iron nail become brownish in color and the blue color of copper sulfate solution fades? The following chemical reaction takes place in this activity. Fe solid plus CuSO4 aqueous will give FeSO4 aqueous plus Cu solid. Equation 1.24 
Here CuSO4 is copper sulfate and FeSO4 is iron sulfate. In this reaction, iron has displaced removed another element, copper, from copper sulfate solution. This reaction is known as displacement reaction. Other examples of displacement reactions are Zn solid plus CuSO4 aqueous will give ZnSO4 aqueous plus Cu solid. Equation 1.25 Here CuSO4 is copper sulfate and ZnSO4 is zinc sulfate. Pb solid plus CuCl2 aqueous will give PbCl2 aqueous plus Cu solid. Equation 1.26 here CuCl2 is copper chloride and PbCl2 is lead chloride. Zinc and lead are more reactive elements than copper. They displace copper from its compounds. Double displacement reaction. Activity 1.10. Take about 3 milliliters of sodium sulfate solution in a test tube. In another test tube, Take about 3 milliliters of barium chloride solution. Mix the two solutions, figure 1.9. What do you observe? You will observe that a white substance, which is insoluble in water, is formed. This insoluble substance formed is known as a precipitate. Any reaction that produces a precipitate can be called a precipitation reaction. Na2SO4 aqueous plus BaCl2 aqueous will give BaSO4 solid plus 2 NaCl aqueous. Equation 1.27 Na2SO4 is sodium sulfate, BaCl2 is barium chloride. BaSO4 is barium sulfate and NaCl is sodium chloride. What causes this? The white precipitate of BaSO4 is formed by the reaction of SO2- and Ba2+. The other product formed is sodium chloride, which remains in the solution. Such reactions in which there is an exchange of ions between the reactants are called double displacement reactions. Recall activity 1.2 where you have mixed the solutions of lead, 2, nitrate and potassium iodide. I. What was the color of the precipitate formed? Can you name the compound precipitated? 2. Rate the balanced chemical equation for this reaction. 3. Is this also a double displacement reaction? Oxidation and reduction. Activity 1.11. Heat a china dish containing about 1 g copper powder, figure 1.10. What do you observe? The surface of copper powder becomes coated with black copper, 2, oxide. Why has this black substance formed? This is because oxygen is added to copper and copper oxide is formed. 2 Cu plus O2 on heating will give 2 CuO. If hydrogen gas is passed over this heated material, CuO, the black coating on the surface turns brown as the reverse reaction takes place and copper is obtained. CuO plus H2 on heating will give Cu plus H2O equation 1.30. If a substance gains oxygen during a reaction, it is said to be oxidized. If a substance loses oxygen during a reaction, it is said to be reduced. During this reaction, 1.29, the copper, 2, oxide is losing oxygen and is being reduced. The hydrogen is gaining oxygen and is being oxidized. In other words, one reactant gets oxidized while the other gets reduced during a reaction. Such reactions are called oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions. CuO on reduction will form Cu. H2 on oxidation will form H2O. Some other examples of redox reactions are ZnO plus C will give Zn plus CO equation 1.31. M 
MnO2 plus 4HCl will give MnCl2 plus 2H2O plus Cl2 equation 1.32. In reaction, 1.31, carbon is oxidized to CO and ZnO is reduced to Zn. In reaction, 1.32, HCl is oxidized to Cl2 whereas MnO2 is reduced to MnCl2. From the above examples we can say that if a substance gains oxygen or loses hydrogen during a reaction, it is oxidized. If a substance loses oxygen or gains hydrogen during a reaction, it is reduced. Recall Activity 1.1 where a magnesium ribbon burns with a dazzling flame in air, oxygen, and changes into a white substance, magnesium oxide. Is magnesium being oxidized or reduced in this reaction? Have you observed the effects of oxidation reactions in everyday life? -y? Corrosion. You must have observed that iron articles are shiny when new, but get coated with a reddish-brown powder when left for some time. This process is commonly known as rusting of iron. Some other metals also get tarnished in this manner. Have you noticed the color of the coating formed on copper and silver? When a metal is attacked by substances around it such as moisture, acids, etc., it is said to corrode and this process is called corrosion. The black coating on silver and the green coating on copper are other examples of corrosion. Corrosion causes damage to car bodies, bridges, iron railings, ships, and to all objects made of metals, especially those of iron. Corrosion of iron is a serious problem. Every year an enormous amount of money is spent to replace damaged iron. You will learn more about corrosion in Chapter 3. Rancidity have you ever tasted or smelt the fat slash oil containing food materials left for a long time? When fats and oils are oxidized, they become rancid and their smell and taste change. Usually substances which prevent oxidation, antioxidants, are added to foods containing fats and oil. Keeping food in airtight containers helps to slow down oxidation. Do you know that chips manufacturers usually flush bags of chips with gas such as nitrogen to prevent the chips from getting oxidized? And that's the end of the chapter Chemical Reactions and Equations. Hope it was worth listening. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so and share with your friends too so that each one can relax their eyes. Stay connected for next chapter. Thank you.